After creating all four op amps comprising the LM324, there remains two component pins that must be accommodated. The power and ground pins, located at pin 4 and pin 11 respectively, are common to all parts in the component. There are two ways to accommodate power and ground. You can create them as hidden pins assigned to a net name, or you can make the pins visible. Using invisible pins that are assigned to net names is not recommended, primarily because the net names for power and ground are often different. The invisible pin method assumes a standard net naming convention such as VCC and GND that are written into the component itself as properties. These power and ground pins are then automatically connected to these nets at the time of placement of the component in the schematic. In addition, the invisible supply pin method conveys less information about the design at the schematic level. The designer would need to drill down into the component to see the specific pins and net names. This can increase the chance of unintended design errors. The second way is to make these power supply pins visible. When creating a component composed of multiple parts, this approach has three variations. In the case of the LM324, you can create five separate parts, the four op amps and one power supply connection part. The second variation is adding the visible supply pins to only one of the four parts. The third option is adding both power pins to every part of the component. Let's consider the pros and cons of each approach. The first option is to add a fifth part with two power supply pins, pin 4 for VCC and pin 11 for ground. As we place the power pins, we change the electrical type to power to assure correct checks with respect to the connection matrix rules. The main challenge with this approach is forgetting to add the power supply part to the design. However, this would be flagged by the design rule checker and would result in an unused subpart in component warning. The second option eliminates the need for the fifth part by adding the power supply connections to one of the parts. This approach will go far towards assuring that power supply connections are added. However, one of the advantages of using a component with multiple identical parts is the ability to swap them to facilitate printed circuit board design. Putting the power pins on only one part creates a difference with the remaining three parts. This eliminates automatic swapping capability. This approach is recommended, though, when there are only two parts and they are each different. The third method is to add power supply pins to every part of the component. To do this, simply select the power supply pins and in the Properties panel, assign them to Part 0. The Part 0 designation will apply the pins to every part defined in the component. This is a safe option in terms of connecting power because designers using this part will be prompted by the power pins to assure connections are made. However, it does become possible to connect different power and ground nets to the same component. But once again, this situation will be caught by the design rules checker with a nets with multiple names violation. This violation occurs when multiple net names are attempted to be assigned to a single circuit net. In the end, the approach you decide to use can be based on your personal preference and on any established guidelines already in place in your organization.